John, when you look at Europe, I don't know whether this is an underestimation of the, you, you know, the possible Brexit flip side and mm -hmm. what that means for Germany and the others, or whether it's just more of a, you know, it to the for now is stable as long as Germany doesn't get uh, extra terrorists from from the the U.S. They'll kind of, you know, muster through and be okay. I, I think it's muddled along. It's sort of a sub trend rate. If uh, the ECB weren't about to relaunch a bond buying program, I think you should be a lot more worried about what the slowdown in growth means for sovereign spreads and what the political uncertainty in Italy means for spreads. But if you had to pick one time to have uh, economic stress and political stress, it's when the ECB is relaunching bond buying. That really dampens the volatility that would normally result from, from all of these issues. Okay. Well, is there anything that, that you'd be looking to buy right now in Europe, or does it just look too throughty? There's a search for yield. But also there's a, still, I guess, a political uncertainty. Exactly. So there's no value in Europe, per se, but I'd still rather be long spreads, whether that's corporate spreads or peripheral spreads, than neutral. I think you have um, high valuations that are just going to be sustained through the ECB buying program, and, and that to me is the, is the main policy support for markets that otherwise face a lot of political and cyclical risk. John, uh, one of the great notes of July and August was the J.P. Morgan call on an extrapolation of U.S. yield well down below 1 percent, even below 0 percent. And the idea, the model, the thinking, not a forecast, folks, but the thinking of negative rates in the United States. We've got negative real yields now big time in the United States. Is there a permanence mm -hmm. to that? I think it would become permanent if the U.S. economy went into a recession, because I'm not sure how the U.S. is going to get out of the next recession if policy rates have to go down to, to zero to cope with this issue. So uh, you could see a permanence resulting in a few years' time, but you have to go through a major cyclical down, downturn first. I don't think we're going to permanently negative uh, real yields in the U.S. just because of uh, what's happening on the, on the trade war side. It has to get a lot worse. From where you sit with your wonderful synthesis and cross-asset at J.P. Morgan, are the central bankers ignoring or insensitive to the effect of negative real yields and indeed negative nominal yields on commercial banking? I, I think they're very aware of the potential downside risk to this. And the reason I call them potential is because negative rates to date don't seem to have any I impact in terms of dampening loan growth. And it also doesn't seem to be dampening consumption by consumers who are also the savers, the ones who are earning the, the negative rates. So they're, they're wary of this as a risk scenario. I think that uh, essentially drives why they move very slowly with further rate cuts. So the ECB, even though it might think it could cut rates to negative 100 from negative 40, probably only goes 10 basis points this week because it, it wants to kind of test the, the limits of negative interest rates.